This video and the awesomeness that we are doing to this frame is brought to you by Simply Safe. It is time to start working on the frame. We got it separated from the body from this 93 Suburban. It looks pretty good. It's a little bit dirty. The only real grease is up here just from miscellaneous leakage over the years. For sitting outside, it's like, look at that. No, this isn't bad at all. It's just dirty. We'll blow this thing off. We're gonna paint it with pour 15. Once we get it cleaned off enough, we're gonna take the wheels off and put it on a rotisserie because um, Rob, the guy we rent from, he has one. So if you have one, why would you not want to use it? So we already sprayed some degreaser on the front end here to let it soak, so. <laughs> I'm impressed. That, that looks 30 like 30 years old. That looks like brand new metal. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's impressive. I wasn't expecting that. I was not either. Uh, score some pucks. Good luck. <laughs> Something like that. Are you ready? You know, the usual driver pump talk. Start cleaning up some back here, too. It's really not bad at all. Some of the factory black frame dip is still on there i think this thing had been through mud at some point a long time ago because you're finding mud blowing out of you know random places but it's really not that bad you can see a line here where i gone over and where i hadn't so it's working very well we're super pumped to get this thing like stripped on the rotisserie this is gonna be really cool all gloss black. We got the top coat too, so we'll put that the top coat on the places of, you know, where you can see sun, like on the side rails, the things you want to look nice. And we're gonna delete this and do coilovers. We'll have a video on that too. Force and bar delete will be a different video. I think you guys would like to see that. Took a little bit of a break, it's kind of drying off. Now you really get a good idea of what it looks like clean and what it used to look like. That's pretty neat. We're really making progress here. But Logan wanted to do the grotiest part herself. Also the most satisfying. Right here. Mm. The only bad thing I noticed is this shock mount area is like cracked in here. But we can weld that back together pretty easily I'd say and I thought that maybe we did that whenever we left this body mount accidentally hooked up but the fact that they have this piece on here tells me that it was already that way and somebody had band-aided it what are you eating first form jalapeno meat stick yeah we eat those things all the time and 20 grams of protein it's a lot yeah it's like great when you don't have to uh, stop what you're doing and make food the link in my description will get you free shipping on those things if you want to try them. Where it says the link to the supplements the we use. The jalapeno one is my favorite. The smokehouse one we got is good too. Yep, jalapeno smokehouse. Ready? Yep. Mmm, grody. Perfectly preserved and junk. I'm taking it in the face for you guys. So beautiful. Oh yeah. We're gonna do some double duty here. Check this out. For some of the areas that have uh, a little bit of scale going on back here, there's really not even that much. This is not very good. Well, this is a little bit like right here. We're up in here, these pieces you can kind of flake <laughs> off. You just put it in a place where it needs it, like somewhere there's obviously... Yeah, does it like touch it? Yeah, you like run it on there and it knocks the flakes okay, off. Okay, so you like rub it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Put it here so there's like actually flakes in there. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, cool. I like this. Is that your new favorite thing? Yeah. 
I think we need earplugs. That's really loud. <laughs> Minor and Elvis. Okay. Well, I just blew all the rust off right here. And then the gun's not happy, so it started sucking. But Who wants to see Logan do more of her own commentary while working? Leave a comment. You know there's gonna be a bunch of comments, right? Mm. <laughs> Look how dirty I am. You are so dirty. progress so far this side looks awesome okay so like here's a visual take note of what that side looks like okay, we'll go over here much different so we'll get to the rest of that and we will figure out a way to bolt the front and rear of the frame onto the rotisserie probably tomorrow Spent about 20 minutes just washing all of the dirt off that came off of this thing. Like washing it away from the driveway here. It's a lot. So we're trying something different. I am practically taking Mitchell's place and doing this stuff. Or trying to do this stuff. Whatever. So I've been using this air scaler, whatever it's called. And getting all the rust off of here so when we paint it it'll go on smoother because these are like places that you can see still like kind of like on Elvis so the side I've done haven't done this or any of this it's gonna look much better okay Mitchell cut this out because I really suck anyway but this side hasn't been touched and gross. And it's smooth, different colors. I convinced myself to remove all the brake line stuff. Um, really didn't want to have to make brake lines or reroute them or anything like that. If I'm being completely honest, I have never cut and flared a brake line before. Just never had to. I thought, you know what? If we just take it off now, it'll be easier to paint this. And then I will force myself to learn how to do that and I will do a nice job too. So we're going to take that off and take the rest of the harness out because the only thing attaching it to the truck still are those zip ties along the frame rail. That's it. So we might as well just take the whole thing off and get it out of the way. This will be really easy to put back on once the frame is painted. We can do most of the assembly with the body off and then when we're done put the body back down. Like, you know, do something, lower the body down, make sure it'll fit, and then, you know, pick it back up, and, you know, like, take advantage of having the body off. I've never done anything like that before. This is uncharted territory, but we're doing pretty good. So, I have something to tell you that it's not my fault, right? What? So, these are, like, stuck in there, right? Mm -hmm. These are, like, all fine, right? Yeah. Are they missing a stud or something? I think these ones spin. Oh yeah, I took these out and threaded them back in just to keep um, keep poor fifteen out of the holes. Okay. Those ones are just the back side of brackets that are screwed in over there still. Okay. Yeah, you're all good. Okay. So I pulled the entire harness out, all the brake lines. It's pretty easy to just clutch clips there, and put all the bolts back in mostly but not the whole way because we don't want to glue them to the frame with the 415. I figure if we get it up in there, it'll be okay. If it's stuck to the threads a little bit, it'll still bust off. But if it was fully flush and painted around it, 
it might be stuck in there forever. But the whole body harness here, we'll go through this, clean it up, put new loom on it, anything messed up, we'll fix that. The only thing holding it to the frame was just the strand that goes right back to the taillights, basically. Everything else is already laying there, so we just cut those at times and dug it out. Uh, same with the brake lines and the fuel lines. The fuel lines aren't going to get reused anyway. Now we can paint that all cleanly, perfect, put the bolt in the same way too. Looks like Mr. Logan's swatting flies. Huh? Are you swatting flies? There was a mosquito. Oh, did you kill it? I don't know. I don't see it anymore. Well, that'll have to do. Now I'm going to pull the hitch off because it'll be really easy to bolt the rotisserie to these bolt holes back here. I think so. So, let's freaking go. Sparing you all the unnecessary time lapsing. This is hardly the interesting part of the build, which you should subscribe to if you're interested in it. And make sure you turn all notifications on whenever you put your post notifications on, otherwise you might not see them at all. So, there you go. Yeah. Now we're starting to figure out how to get the rotisserie on here. This thing's pretty neat. Really, this is kind of totally unnecessary, but we're doing it because there's access to one and it will be cool. This is Rob, he owns our building, and this rotisserie, which I've never had access to in my entire life. <laughs> we're gonna figure out how to use one now. So the last time this thing was raised was 15 years ago. They kind of feel like the fish in Finding Nemo, whenever they flop out of the bags into the ocean, they're just like, oh yeah, now what? I don't know. I think we're going to Pull the rear end out with the leaf springs too because I ordered new leafs. Drop that out because it's really, there's a lot of weight on here still. Doesn't want to flip over. I think once we get the rear end out of there, that'll make that a lot easier. And we can keep pressure washing. Now we have more areas exposed like these knuckles and whatnot. Clean it up some more. That inner rail in there needs some more work. Something to remember that I try to remember myself and I guess also passing along is the work is temporary. The result is forever. Put in the work now. This thing will be awesome forever. But I keep reminding ourselves that because you don't want to get lazy and just be like, you know what, screw it. Let's just paint it now or whatever. Don't even really take this off, whatever. No, do it. Do it right. Do it once. Enjoy it for longer than it takes to do the work. Saying that helps me remember that too, because it's a struggle. This is a, this is a daunting, daunting project, but we're here, we're in it. We're in it to win it. And we're glad you guys are here for it. Well, we got it up on its side and now we can clean the bottom and prep the bottom and then we're one step closer to painting. I'd say we're pretty close now. The top, the sides are good. Yeah, we just gotta clean the bottom off. And what happened was we underestimated how heavy this was. And now this pin is bent and starting to come off. That bolt's bent, we can't get it out. So when we pull it out, everything's just gonna go woof, really, really uncontrollably. And we don't know how to do that because it's too heavy to pick it up and get that out of there because it's stuck. Hmm. So we're just going to lower it and knock it free and stand clear and see what happens. I think that's about all we can do. <laughs> Bend it the rest of the way out. I mean, you've got to redo it anyway. Yeah. Let's get it close. Go. Oh. Okay, that was really anticlimactic. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a lot worse. And to tell you the truth, that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my seat out because I thought this was going to be a lot of banging. It's like a whole big show. I got the hammer and the screwdriver and... Well, dang. <laughs> okay. This is the result we wanted, but... Home now. That's Rob's boring. like Superman. He just came over and saved the day. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> well, so I got to think of... Well, it's got to be big, so... <laughs> We're going to put that down. We're going to put that in revision number... 3B. 
bigger bolts at both ends. The directions for the Pour 15 that you cannot apply it below 70 degrees. We're actually using the Simply Safe sensor to make sure that the frame area, like the air around the frame, is over 70 degrees. It is a whole home security system with multiple really cool gadgets and sensors and everything that's centralized through your phone so you can see right now it says 74 so we are all good it says newell water on there right now because we're going to use that in the water bay or newell motorhome to make sure it doesn't freeze it'll tell you hey man your pipe's about to freeze and you can do something about it which is really good because some of you may remember that we actually did have a problem with the pipes freezing during the big texas winter storm you hear the base station ding, you plug that in somewhere. It'll tell you on your phone and this neat keypad, entry sensor open. So you know, you always know. What if somebody doesn't open the door, they break a window to get in? Well, this is a glass break sensor and you put this near your window. So if it breaks glass, it detects that frequency and will set the alarm off and call the police, tell you about it, anything you want. But what if got in here somehow getting around all that. Well, there's a motion sensor too. You can also arm and disarm the system with this little key tab right here. There's even cameras. There's indoor, outdoor. We got them both set up. You can watch us doing stupid stuff. And they also got a water sensor. So you could put this in somewhere that's prone to flooding, like underneath your washing machine or maybe in the water bay, the newel. We might use it there. Hold on, I'm It says, if somebody just like decides to just straight up walk in here, I'm just gonna press the panic button. <laughs> then I'm stressed out. I need you to come up here. It's extremely easy to set up. Did it all from my phone, and you can save 20% on your Simply Safe system. Visit simplysafe.com/stapleton42 to get your setup today and keep your shop or house safe, just like ours. Today's paint day, so started spraying this thing off with the cleaner degreaser that they have on their website even though we've already cleaned and degreased this thing with the that 505 yellow oven cleaner you know like it's been cleaned different angles different directions we're not leaving anything to chance we want this stuff to stay on there so the last step we're using the stuff that they actually call for it wants you to, to dilute it so that's what we did and I would recommend wearing gloves because I literally just did that and I, I can already feel like the tips of my fingers feel weird. Got all the degreaser off. Now it's time for the last step before painting, which is the metal prep. Basically from what I gather, you spray it on there and you got to keep it wet. Just kind of keep going over it for 20 to 30 minutes and then you rinse it off. And then the frame has to be completely dry before you start painting. So we're going to put this in a sprayer and start spraying it. Also this whole video, has been filmed over the course of like two weeks. Apologize for the lack of uploading more frequently, but in lieu of putting out shorter, more useless videos, we just bridged it all into one, which actually does worse because um, collectively gets less views, but it's, it's more condensed and more informative. So for something like this, that's more important. I don't really know what we're doing, but we're doing it. Yeah. Spray it on everything, I guess. If you're wondering about the open ports on the steering box and if we learned our lesson after having the power steering go bad during sick week in the Escalade from cleaning the power steering pump, no, we have not learned our lesson. But um, I didn't want to have to separate the pitman arm or the any of that stuff right now because we don't have the tools to do it. Whatever. We'll get a better steering box. Guys, this is so much fun. Can you tell how much fun I'm having? Yeah. Don't you wish you were doing this instead? No. <laughs> the rules have reversed. You get to clean things now.
after careful um, consideration and research, mostly looking through YouTube and seeing all the people like, poor 15 is garbage, poor 15 is bad, I'm never using it again. I also put it on when it was 50 degrees outside and it didn't work and now I'm mad. <laughs> it's 68 degrees outside. The instructions say apply in 70 degrees or higher. 68, not even 69, it's 68. So we're, we rolled it in here and we got some space heaters going so we can keep it above 70 degrees in here all the time regardless of weather, if it rains, anything like that. We were gonna put plastic down outside anyway, which now thinking about it, when the wind blew, it would have blown up and gotten stuck to stuff and made us really mad. So it's probably a good idea to bring it in here anyway, but now we are certain that the conditions will be correct. This is what the frame looks like after the etching. It's pretty wild. I think and it worked really, really good on the areas that Logan spent a lot of time on with the air needle scaler. And some areas up here, it could have used more time probably because it said heavier, um, heavier rust meant more time. But the stuff also sticks better to like heavier, more pitted rust. And that's not really an important area. When the body's on, you're not going to see any of this top stuff except from here up this is like the most important part right up here and the bottom three quarters of these frame rails back and forth and i guess the third most important are the inside areas that we're gonna have to look at every time we go to work on this thing the areas that bother me on the escalade that are coming off and are covered in oily goo basically that's what we're trying to prevent lessons learned from the escalade are being applied to this much less powerful much slower get just as cool old suburban so we're gonna wait for this thing to dry off completely let it warm up a little bit in here get some plastic down and start laying some paint i guess our area is prepared now since the whole paint incident we got the frame strapped down both ways and before you raise concern no it is not that heavy the straps crank and pull it very easily enough to relieve tension off of the other one if they're not um, exactly the same so we will be okay and we're gonna get all suited up because we read online that if you get this stuff on your skin it does not come off for months or anything like it's very um, it's very 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 sticky so we're taking extra precaution not to get it on the floor because we don't want to have black dots all over the floor First impressions, what do you think? It's a little bit goes a really long way. It does. It spreads very well. Yeah. Just did that up there just to wipe it off the brush because I tried to pour it into a cup and it didn't really work that well. So we're just gonna work out of the bucket for now. The inside channel first and then work up. That way we don't get any of this paint that will never ever come off into Logan's hair. You know what this reminds me of? Yeah. When Spongebob and Patrick painted Mr. Krabs' house with the paint that will never ever come off. Yeah. Except we can't just spit on this and wipe it off because we prepped this according to the steps. So it should stay on there. Okay. How about a time lapse?
possible while still getting full coverage, working on the bottom. And then we'll disconnect the ratchet straps, lay it flat, and we can do the sides and the top more easily. Well, it's black. We went hard on this thing for, I don't know, how long did we work on it? How long did we work on this thing for? At least an hour. Well, maybe like an hour and a half. It really wasn't that long. Yeah. But we were just like, just going at it the whole time. And I should try not to walk on that because there's still wet drips there that I don't want to get on the concrete, but. I just noticed the spot was dripping. That's okay. Where is it dripping at? Oh, where I glopped on a bunch in that last spot. Oh, you did that? Yeah. Sounds about right. That whole inner area was empty by the time you bailed out. It started wiping it off of you. So I just went in there and got her done. <laughs> There's still more we're going to have to do, you know, in some areas that were hard to get, but... <laughs> did you just pull it out of the garbage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be... It's fine. It was, it was tough. I spent most of the time up here getting the brush into the nooks and crannies. And, well, I missed the spot right there. I missed the whole back side of the shock tower. That's cool. Cool. <laughs> That's why I told you to focus on the front while I did all that. Well, I did. It was just hard. The whole, the whole thing was hard. It just takes time. They say that if it gets on your skin, it doesn't come off for months. But... That is false. Yeah, I think that means only if it completely dries first, because it was all it over. It was completely dry. Oh. Well, I mean, I guess it didn't dry for hours, but it was on there for like an hour. Yeah, it was there for a while. Um, goof off. You wipe vigorously with a paper towel. We'll get it off. Don't worry, it probably causes cancer, as like everything else does. <laughs> so Logan just knocked out the top coat. Where is it here? Yeah, the top coat for the UV protection because the regular Pore 15 is not UV protected. So if it sits out in the sun, it's going to fade. It's not going to be shiny. It's not going to be like deep black anymore. So she went through and did all the areas that might get sunlight once it's complete. Like, you know, when the body is on the truck, you can kind of see the bottom of the frame rail. Uh, you can see in the inner fenders, or if the hood's open, you can see there, like, basically any of the essential viewing areas of the frame she covered, because probably wouldn't have a problem, because it's under the truck, but, you know, after years of driving it, or, you know, cumulative time sitting in parking lots, the sun, you know, it would hit the frame rail, or it would be reflected off of the ground, or something, it's just better to do it than to not do it. And it's worth noting that the top coat is much thicker than the regular Pore 15, according to Logan. So I didn't do it. She did, because she's awesome. Are you over there making faces at me? You, you are awesome. I love you. I love you, too. Other than the texture difference, it looks the same. So, here you have it. Gloss black frame, it's freaking awesome. Next steps will be getting the new leaf springs on there. We got polyurethane bushings, brand new U-bolts, top bottom plates, everything. We got a nine and a half inch 14 bolt rear end from a junkyard. We're gonna clean that up, paint it also. Got a cool diff cover, have to put a posi in it. Uh, all those things, but I got ahead of myself. Next step would be to get that rear end in there so this thing can roll around independently again and we can get it off the rotisserie. Hope you guys learned something. Stick around for some funny bonus footage from the Pennzoil 400 with Vice Grip Derek. And if you like the new shirts and hats we've been wearing, we can show you those too. So we got some cool new stuff over here. I just want to make cool noises. Yes, yes we do. It's a nice new wall of merch. And a hat I guess what are you doing I don't know not about to break a toy like you I didn't break this one yeah you didn't break mine I broke the other one I broke Gravedigger 
but we already got a billet axle on the way so we'll show you more about that later these things are really fun anyway what were you doing though doing the merch plug because you suck oh yeah i do i don't know if you saw us wearing the I'm new kidding. boom the new boom tube shirt which is that's actually like the old morgan mcclure uh boom tube thing that's on the wall over there so we're just looking at it we're like man that looks freaking cool we need to put that on a shirt so imagine the camera zooms in well you guys you guys know <laughs> we got that and we just added these new flex fits there's white white logo in lxl which we haven't had in a long time and these stable and autoworks logo shirts it's on gildan dry blend you real g's know that everything we do is on the next level brand shirts so like 50 50 um polyester fitted they're like you know more breathable and stuff well not everybody likes those so we got something for you guys in you know the classic gildan dry blend style shirt so now we got something for you too and they're actually cheaper than the other ones so you can check those out at stapletonautoworks.com. You'll get some Holly stickers, a handwritten note signed by both of us. Everything we do just gets packed in here. And if you want, I can even make Ruger sign it too because I have done that. Yep. Yeah, I don't know how, uh, what is that, like PETA or something would feel about, you know, dipping his putting his paw on one of those ink things and then <laughs> the paper, but like, you know what? It's fine. People yeah. eating tasty animals. <laughs> <laughs> not Ruger, not Ruger though. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't seen, we added these recently too. That's the Monte Carlo and these Good Wrench style crew shirts. Those are front and back printed. Everything's front and back printed except those. Yep. But there's also a hidden 69 in here so if you buy one maybe you can find it and there's also a hidden three yep so there's easter eggs they're back and we got cool stickers too you know for your toolbox or people you don't like anything yep anything like that okay. what are you doing? i'm kicking it so you can't break it oh. it's gonna show ruger We're out here in Las Vegas. Pennzoil brought us to the Pennzoil 400. Eric is here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be filming, but I'm just gonna film stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll see how it goes. I haven't been to one of these things in like 10 years. Apparently we just walked in here. I don't know if we're supposed to be here or not. We just, you know. You just look like you know what you're doing and then yeah, you just you just have to be on a mission. Yeah. How did we get in here? I don't know. I think we wonder we just did a sprint on the grass. You think that we should be able to go do snow angels in there. Oh they're hooking it up. Fertilized recently. What kind of grass is it? Uh, Bermuda, I believe. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it is luscious though. Alex. Hi, Alex. Alex is down there. Next time. What are you going to say to him? Uh, score some pucks. Good luck. <laughs> Something like that. You know, the usual driver pump talk. I'm going for it. He might just straight up pretend we're not here. He could, he could just look over here and be like, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing that today. I'm gonna try to get a signature, I think. We'll lure him over and be like, I'm your biggest fan, you need to sign this, and then I'll embarrass him in front of everybody. Alex, I need a signature, Alex! <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm not gonna deal with him. <laughs> uh, he knew. He's like, they he will knew. ruin my day. You know, he didn't need, he was just straight face and like it's gonna ruin ruin it. <laughs> Some of the police officers were here. So hold this. You have your camera? Yeah, I got one on right now. Oh yeah. Thank you so much. Officer Oreo. I think he has like four thousand pounds. He's a drug dog. He's a drug dog. Drug dog. 
So now we gotta figure out how to get out of this place. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. Hey, you too. What's up? I thought the, the officer's name was Cook. But I looked at it, I thought it said Cookie because he said the dog's name was Oreo. Yeah, like Officer Cookie with his dog Oreo. <laughs>